All right, so I'm trying to expand my repertoire a little bit, um, moving away from florals and things that are extremely feminine to a uh, wider range. And so this is my first piece, this uh, fly fishing fly, and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, I know some of you guys already saw the fly, uh, but that's before I did the negative background. Um, so I just, let me zoom in a little bit here so I can show you in depth. I very carefully guided my um, brush around the contours of the feathers. And then I also used that opportunity to define the feathers in the back end because um, they kind of just disappeared. So what we're going to work with today is a new piece and I'm going to stick with the fly fishing theme. Here's my background for it. Um, or maybe this is my background for it. Hmm, I don't know. Yeah, maybe that's it. But um, I'm going to try to recreate an antique fly rod and reel. I'm going to focus in on the reel part. So um, that's what you'll be watching today. Hope you enjoy. In the interest of full disclosure, I am using a reference photo that I got off of Pinterest today. And it's just a, a photograph. Um, I'm not gonna sketch anything out for this one. So it might turn out terribly. We'll see. The reel is made out of brass, which is really interesting because it has a lot of variances to it, um, brass does, especially old brass. So you'll see some blues and greens kind of creep out there in the tarnishing. And I'm gonna try to replicate that. That's one thing that I absolutely love about watercolors is how they play with each other um, in a wash. So again, a wash is like when we have a large area um, that's damp and then we allow the, waters, the water to kind of move naturally and create something that we probably couldn't if we were just brush stroking. Um, one of my very favorite features about watercolors. And as you can see, as I've done this, my background, first and foremost, is completely dry. Uh, that's pretty important because if it's not completely dry, you are going to really struggle with um, not having that bleed happen on your paper. It's like a a blessing and a curse. We really like it in some cases and then other cases it's really frustrating to have. So in order to get my tarnish I'm gonna wash out a really really light green and I'm gonna make that very 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 wet so that I have very little pigment in there. Looking at my example, I can see that the tarnish isn't just everywhere. It's just kind of like here and there. So I'm just going to try to mirror that, kind of that here and there sort of thing. And if I feel like I've got too much water there on my um, painting, then I'm going to take my dry brush and sweep that back a little bit. Because really what I'm going for is a stain here. I don't want a really dark an edgy tarnish spot. I want more of a stain. On this side, a little more blue to give it some variation.
little more blue in my wash and then we're gonna come around the bottom end here and leave a little bit of space there by the end because I wanna let that maybe define a little bit with a shine or a shimmer. I'll see how things work out. But you can see that's a lot darker, but that's okay because I want this side to be like shaded. So it's okay that I'm a little darker here. Let things dry. my classroom I'd probably paint on a board um, but I don't have a board with me or tape so I'm gonna use some weights that I have around to try to press this paper and keep it keep it as flat as possible with uh, the, the shadow first and then try to use that negative space um, that I'm creating to um, make that handle pop out. Remember when we're doing shades, we just take our tone, whatever we're working with, and add black to it. And I'm really quite um, thin here with my paint. There's a lot of water to just a very little pigment and I'm gonna stay that way until I'm really sure with what I have and then I might make it a little more bold by going over it one more time. So the handle or the reels, uh, yeah I guess you call that the handle that you spin to, to roll the, um, the line back in. Um, it's, it's situated here in the center and then it kind of falls down. So I'm gonna to try to sketch out that area. And I wanna be really careful not to eliminate too much here because like, you know, I'm not using graphite and I can't erase it. And then this all up here against the handle is kind of this delightfully chunky mess of old stuff. So I'm gonna let that be a little rocky and a little messy right there. back for the lower part of the handle. I've got that shadow casting down here. Uh -huh. Use the word cast in a fishing demo. That's funny. And then that shadow falls down here and it swings around. So I'm going to outline that with those of you that find water, watercolor challenging, um, I think I've said it before, but if you're new to these series, uh, a lot of the time, the reason why you are struggling is because you've got too much water on your brush. And that can become very hard to control. If, again, if you have an area where you feel like there's too much, and I kind of like that there, honestly, but if there's too much for you, then you can simply just pull that out with your brush, let your brush soak it up. And then dry on your paper towel. My handle um, has this, the little spinner part of your handle pops out right here. So I'm going to try to replicate that next. <laughs> I feel like I'm saying try a lot, and I am, because, again, another one of my favorites about painting in general is that your reference photos are for reference only. They are not. Um, I know that there are people out there who are able to paint something and it looks just absolutely picture perfect. 
but I am not one of those people. And I've found that if I want to rest easy with my artwork and I want to enjoy my artwork, I have to learn to appreciate what I'm making. If I'm focused so much on what other people can do, then I'm ruining my artwork for myself and that ain't cool, bro. Like, that's not what this is about. Button right there at the end. So I'm gonna flood that in. I'm pretty happy with it, with the shape. I look awkward to you, but I think once I get some value on there, it'll make sense. And I want a little bit of a shine right here, so I have a couple options. Um, one is to go back in time and leave that space white, or I might. Working on just washing it out just a little bit. Yeah, there we go. But another thing you can do, just like when you work with um, pencils, you can also pop back on with some white ink pen to make those uh, shines pop out. Now that's kind of cheating. Well, cheating or using your resources, one of the two. Now that area is really, really wet right now. So I think I might need to let it dry. I'm kind of enjoying watching that bleed happen though. And I'm gonna come over and do a little shading down here at the bottom at the base. That's pretty potent. right there I've got just this little bit of paint gathering and I want that to go away so I'm gonna put the dryer on it for just a minute and then try again Going again ah much easier to control and this has a little stain on that little handle I'm just gonna bring that up okay now for the button on the inside. The button on the inside is black and there's a bit of a shine right in the center of it. So I'm going to start with a really washy black. Pull that pigment away and now I'm going to go back in with a much more bold and much more dry black. And now I can define that how I want it to up here. If I come back in a couple of hours and I still am not happy with it, then I am leaving myself a little bit of wiggle room to work with that. I need a little more definition on this knob to make it appear three-dimensional. Just like with your graphite work, try to be push your comfort zone a little bit as far as where you'll go for darkness um, with watercolors. Help you be a more bold artist. Now the arm of this knob um, has a little connector a little square crank connector and it is really really close to the I mean it's all the same brassy and stuff so I'm gonna be really careful to try to just like pop out that crank that feels a little big um, my lines feel a little thick so I'm gonna wash that out and then remove the excess so I can get those nice, crisp little lines right where I want them. There you go. And then I'm going to work on having a little bit of that brassy effect happening on the handle as well. 
So it needs that definition. And it needs to look like it's all part of the same piece. I don't want it to be too much different from the back part of the wheel. Notice I'm leaving just a few little areas for shine and that sort of thing. Cautious to get up and around that crank, the handle of the crank. Okay, decent. Pretty happy with it, but I need to fix my shadow. By omitting the paint right up against the edge of things, I have allowed space for there to be a little bit of a shimmer, a little earthy shine to my handle. I'm just going to play with a little more tarnish back here, just so I feel like I have kind of a blank spot here. So I'm going to even that out a little bit with a just a little more tarnish. This section of the reel has um, a number of different little bolts and those bolts are what's securing the casing together. Um, so those holes on this reel happen on the inside, and I'm just gonna do little circles for that. I don't know if I really like that. Maybe lighter. Sure, that'll work. work on the second part of that um, reel plus the all of the uh, line that's encased in there. So I have this casing bolt that I can kind of, I'm just drawing with water right now because I kind of want to figure out how I want this to look. And here's the other side of the reel. Side here is the twine. Okay. I know what I'm going to do now. Start, I think I'm going to start first with the casings. Hopefully it's not too wet. are going to move back and up just slightly in order to make that appearance of the third dimension. I've got another casing up here, but I can't really see it, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. Maybe just leave a little room for shine. And then my fishing string is going to be kind of important here. Working with 
watercolors, you want to kind of stick with the light stuff first, or the, yeah, with the, the light stuff first and then put your shadows on behind it, which is just exactly backwards of what we do with every other kind of art, and that can be really, really frustrating and confusing sometimes. So, my advice, if you're stuck, always go for the lighter first, and then you can always pop on shadows and make things darker that way. But it's really hard sometimes to try to fix something if it's too dark. I don't know, I probably don't really need that. It's really hard to see that. Okay. I can go quite a bit darker with that as well, but I'm not going to just yet. This really interesting shine that happens across that little bolt casing and it's almost like bright blue let's see if I can replicate that it looks too much out of place oh that's not bright blue if it looks too much out of place I'll just take it away actually that might be about where I'm to get that idea of shine I like to leave a little bit of blank space if I can I need to dry that so I'm gonna leave that lighter tone resting there against the blue just to accentuate that shimmer so I want that to look as shiny as possible it's pretty challenging when we're working with this sort of medium I've left that spot blank there for my thread um, before I go too crazy. I feel like I needed to find the bottom of this because it looks a little off kilter. Yep, happier with that. Okay, my thread has to stay pretty light in the middle. Um, so I'm just going to work with a really light gray right now. And my gray has, I'm leaving some brown tones in there and a lot of water to it. Um, my darkest thread is gonna be down, down here and then obviously right up here where the light source is because I know the light source is there because of that shine. I'm gonna try to maintain a pretty light effect there. it's going to be. I think I remember this portion here is going to be dark and shaded as is this up here but it's in the middle that I've got to watch myself. Now unfortunately good thread has defining lines and that means that we've got some bold lines coming up but we've got to be really careful about how we control those lines. My brush right now is really quite dry. And again, lots of lines. I'm gonna be okay with this though. For those of you that are curious about um, position. I've got my hand really close to the end of the brush now, just like as if I were sketching, and very little paint on my bristles. Okay, and I think I'm just going to leave it at that. I could probably go back and make a decision later if I wanted to make more definition or more shadow. <laughs> she says that she does more. Um, but for the most part, I think I'm going to be okay with that. A lot of this is more effect 
than it is getting each and every specific line down, especially with watercolor. All right, so there's my reel. Now I'm gonna place the rod underneath it. And I'm gonna have my rod coming all the way down here and all the way up here. One of these rods have kind of a metal uh, fixture to them. And if I use that, I wanna be really careful that I don't totally screw up the shine possibilities that I have with, with that. So I'm gonna be really, really light with my first couple brush strokes. You might not be able to see it. Okay, not awful, not perfect, but not awful. Okay, first metal casing. Um, we've got this kind of like a brace that happens around the rod, and these brace lines are gonna be really important to define the, the um, like the roundness of the rod as well. So it's probably really good that we've got these metal casings to work with, even though they're gonna be a little challenging. Skip some white space because I want to be able to be shine there. Potentially. Try to keep your round um, sections the same, uh, going in like the same type of motion. If you don't, it's going to look like your uh, perspective is shifted. is so full of detail I kind of wonder if it might be interesting to leave the rod a little bit unfinished and like your imagination is kind of taking over here I don't know that's not everybody's preference I know but guess what this is my painting not yours I do what I want From here on, the handle is actually wood, so I'm going to change my tones. <clears throat> my palette, but I'm mixing brown right now. I'm going to add in just a touch of yellow. I always like to have my palette be kind of a mishmash of colors and tones uh, because this way I have a variety of things at my disposal and I don't have to like mess too much to find a variation. It's just right there in front of me. Okay. So start of my handle and I kind of wish that wash was the other way. Notice I'm just using like one tone and then I'm going darker and darker. And if I do it all too much, too quick, then I'm gonna lose my control. Okay, we're dry and I'm gonna go in and make those wood markings. My preference, we've got a very little bit of water and a lot of pigment because I want to be able to control this. And I'm mixing brown and black together because I don't want just plain brown. That looks a little bit too Crayola. I'm going to add a little black there. Here we go.
there's my wood grain candle. I put a little like knot in there. I mean, you could mess with that if you want it to be a little bit more knotted, that'd be fine. Um, okay, now I'm gonna work on this detail like around the reel. I'm gonna let that have my re reel really pull out when I get some more definition down there. So back to black. There's this little fix right here. It's like binding the reel to the metal component. Um, that actually has kind of a bit of a like little platform that it sets on. And that's pretty hard to see, honestly, in the photo. So I'm just gonna kind of be a little obscure here, which is okay. area where like if I'm not really careful I'm gonna lose the sense of the roundness of my um, piece it's just gonna look kind of sloppy so I'm gonna try to get really really close in there and taper that off as best as I can and then come on this side and do the same thing if I try to run through that with my brush the way it is and I know my brush is too wide and then up here, we've got one last little ring that kind of ties these together. This is our last brass piece. And then it goes back to wood the rest of the way. feel so inclined and this might tidy up a few things for you as well you might just strike underneath with one
And that's all for this one. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.